My wife's favorite holiday is Halloween. We were married on Halloween. Our house gets covered in Halloween decorations starting sometime in August. Over the summer, I made her a guillotine-shaped napkin holder, and she's been asking for a coffin-shaped cutting board to go along with it. I wanted to make this project for her as authentic as possible, so I took a drive down to the local cemetery to see if I could find some actual coffin wood laying around. Well, sure didn't see any. Guess we'll have to go on to plan B. Maybe we should stick with the store-bought walnut instead. It seems a little bit safer. This guy was a little rough around the edges, and I really didn't feel like setting up my benchtop jointer. So I blew the dust off of my table saw jointer to give myself a nice clean edge to start with. And once that was established, all I had to do was run my new straight edge against the fence to clean up the other side. To give myself that coffin look, I cut the piece into four equal strips. At least that was the plan. It turns out I suck at math, and these were not equal at all. So, off camera, I fixed it. To make sure all my lumber came out even, I clamped everything together before I cut the ends off. Then I rotated every other board, mostly for aesthetics. While the kids were in school, I snuck upstairs into the freezer and grabbed out all the frosting packets out of their box of toaster strudels and drizzled it all over the walnut. I honestly don't know if this is going to help anything stick, but cleanup was delicious. Once everything came out of the clamps, I cleaned up all the glue and then printed out the coffin template I made. I sprayed the backs of all the paper with a little bit of aerosol adhesive and stuck them to the walnut. I'm pretty sure if I had tried to do this freehand, it would be unrecognizable as any sort of coffin shape. But once everything was lined up and in place, all I had to do was take it over to the bandsaw and cut everything out. Now, you could do this with a jigsaw just as easy. The important part is not to cut directly on the line. Leave yourself a little room for error, because in the next step we're going to take it to the belt sander and sand it to the line for better accuracy. Now if you did everything correctly, it should just take one quick rip and the whole template will come right off. Once I finally got the rest of the template off, I grabbed a scrap piece of wood and marked out where I wanted the accent pieces. I then used that piece of wood and a couple pieces of its friends to make a quick guide so that my router cuts are actually straight. I held on the main pieces with some double stick tape and then I made a couple side braces and held those in place with some CA glue. The slots for the accent pieces are going to be half the thickness of the coffin body. Trying to accomplish this in one pass would be disastrous for the router, the template, and absolutely the wood. So I cut each slot in five or six passes, lowering the router bit a tiny bit each time. Once I had all the slots cut, I measured the width and then transferred that measurement to my table saw to cut out the maple. I cut the maple slightly oversized and then snuck up on the cut little by little until I had a perfect tight fit. I then used my table saw to resaw the maple to the correct depth, being sure to leave them about a sixteenth of an inch proud of the body of the coffin. While those pieces were glued up and in the clamps, I installed a tapered plug cutting bit in my drill press and I began cutting out far more plugs than I could have ever needed. I then took it over to the bandsaw and popped them all out of their holder. Once the strips had dried, I took them out of the clamps and flushed everything up to the body using a flush trim saw. It was then back over to the drill press to drill out the locations for all the walnut plugs that are going to go into the maple. I threw a dab of glue in each of the holes, and then I just hammered in each of the walnut plugs. Then it was back to the sander to clean up the edges where the maple and walnut meet. And finally, I threw a couple pieces of tape on my flush trim saw and cut off all the exposed walnut plugs. The problem with using authentic coffin wood is sometimes you find a couple bug holes. So I mixed up some epoxy, threw in some black dye, and filled everything in. I put a chamfer bit in my router because we put chamfers on everything everything. 
and through a chamfer on both sides of the body. I put a Forstner bit in the drill press so that I could inset the cutting board feet into the body. It was just deep enough so just the edge of the cutting board feet stuck out. I didn't want the cutting board sitting up too high and I think it just gives it a nice look. For a finish I covered everything in oil and once that had dried in I coated it with a bit of wax and buffed it out. I think it came out stunning and my wife absolutely loves it. She'll never know that this is not authentic coffin wood because she's a smart woman and doesn't watch my videos. So she can sleep well at night not knowing that her husband ran from a graveyard screaming like a baby. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you'd like plans for it they're available listed on my website below. If you'd like to continue watching me make a fool of myself please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. I will see you next time.